Okay, awesome. So uh, we're here today to talk about Onyx and its place in the Gen AI ecosystem. And so, you know, to me, Onyx has been a de facto standard for things like computer vision and NLP, but Gen AI has been really vibrant and really prolific. And we're seeing a lot of alternative ways of running models like Llama.CPT, VLM, Hyphen Phase Optimum, and others. And I think it's worth having a discussion of, you know, where is Onyx at relative to all of these other things? When is Onyx going to be chosen for support by hardware vendors? And when is it going to be chosen for usage by uh, software and application developers? So we're joined today by an awesome panel. It's a big panel. So we've got uh, five folks in person and two on the phone. Uh, representing major hardware vendors. So we have AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA. Uh, and then we also have folks from the Onyx teams at Microsoft representing the development of the tools. And uh, we also have two startups with us today um, representing kind of the, the bleeding edge of how this stuff is getting uh, brought out to more people. So um, can I just get like a two minute introduction from everybody? We'll go straight down the line and then onto the phone. Um, just say, you know, like really quick, what company do you represent? What do you do there? And kind of what's your relationship to Onyx? Uh, so I can start, you know, I'm, I'm Jeremy. Krishna just introduced me, but uh, my job here at AMD is to make the AIPC uh, ecosystem and the, the software and applications for that really flourish by building solutions that connect with developers. And of course, that involves a lot of Onyx work. Uh, and so in pursuit of that, uh, I'm a maintainer of Turnkey ML and some other projects as well. Um, so yeah, here we go. Hey, uh, I'm Max. I work for Team Green, uh, as you can see. And <laughs> I'm a developer technology engineer on Workstation, which means I consult our Workstation partners uh, deploying the AI. Nowadays, more and more Gen AI, most of them are also deploying Onyx models just because of the, the very diverse ecosystem. And yeah, some of it is cloud, but most of it should go at some point on device. And at that point, you have to support the wide spectrum of hardware, which Onyx is so far the de facto standard for. Uh, yeah, so I'm Yifeng uh, from Microsoft. So now working on the Onyx Runtime Generative API, a library to, uh, 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 to have a user run a GNI model uh, uh, quickly, and uh, also working on the model optimization uh, for Onyx Runtime. Hi, I'm Rama, and uh, I was on the Onyx, Onyx spec, uh, Onyx operator saying, and Onyx tooling like Onyx script and Onyx rewrite are you heard about, and more recently, also the PyTorch Dynamo export. Hi, I'm Nishit from Intel. I work on, I think unlike a lot of people here, I work on the hardware side of things, but I do work with customers uh, quite a bit, and then a lot of our customers have diverse set of workloads and diverse set of hardware, like somebody mentioned. So in our solutions, we do support Onyx. And I think that's my interaction with Onyx here. Uh, I'm Thomas Summers, uh, have CEO of a startup called Postron AI. We're uh, developing new hardware to accelerate uh, large language models. Uh, previously, uh, I worked with Jeremy at uh, Grok, which is big uh, support of the Onyx ecosystem. So my Onyx knowledge and experience is uh, from there. but. Uh, um, Positron actually is not using Onyx currently, but uh, very interested in talking the perspective of, you know, focusing on LLMs and, and generative AI exclusively um, and why we haven't used Onyx, but uh, hopefully can encourage and get the uh, whole community to uh, build more for, for that specific use case. Okay, uh, onto the phone. Uh, Rajiv, could you introduce yourself? Jeremy. Hey everyone, this is Rajiv Patori. I represent AMD here. And I think AMD is first time in Gen AI. And I think it will be very effective LLS, LLS diffusion on NPU specifically across all part of the platforms, PyTorch, OpenMX, and GTUI. Thanks. And uh, Rajiv is extremely committed to this panel. He's actually calling in from India, where it's the middle of the night. So thank you so much. 
Um, and then, uh, Matt, can you introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. I hope there's not too much of a, an echo. I heard a little bit of an echo from here. But, uh, but uh, my name is Matt Clayton. I'm a, a scene stage engineer or joined during the scene stage of LM Studio, which is a uh, New York City based local LLM platform um, and generally local AI platform. So my job is to integrate LLM runtimes like Llama CDP and Onyx AI into our platform. Um, so we're very, very creative users of the open, uh, open source LLM engine community. So very appreciative to be on this panel um, and excited to, to, to chat about some of these, some of these things. All right, awesome. Thanks everybody. So uh, Yufeng, uh, I'd like you to get us started. Uh, could you, in a little bit of detail, just explain to everybody here what is Onyx Runtime, Gen AI, you know, what are meant to be the key benefits of it? Like, why, why is the team doing the work um, and where you think it sits in the ecosystem? Uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, you know that uh, Onyx Runtime, uh, I can talk about it from Onyx Runtime. So Onyx Runtime is a, a inference engine, mainly inference engine. It can, uh, but it is still, is. but for Gen AI, Right, so it is. Uh, it has uh, a model state uh, to manage but, uh, for the for the user. If they want use just use on its runtime to run a, a, a GNN model, it takes a lot of effort. Uh, like they need to manage the KV cache, update the attention mask, uh, uh, position ID input, uh, and uh, need also need to manage the uh, the loop and all those kind of things it is uh, quite uh, uh, annoying uh, to the user and takes a lot of effort for the user to uh, to handle this. So this is uh, this is the uh, our uh, uh, we found we observe this and uh, uh, we uh, develop uh, uh, on the runtime generated API on top of on the runtime and uh, it can uh, manage the uh, uh, model state. And uh, the generation loop, uh, all those things automatically, and it's also provided the sampling method uh, and the embedded uh, input output uh, uh, processor. And uh, yeah, hopefully with this, I think it's, it's uh, not hopefully. It's uh, you can try it out. So with this library, you can run or set up a, a generative uh, GNAI quickly. Maybe you can. Uh, like run fast three model, llama model with just uh, twenty to thirty lines of code, and uh, but uh, without this library, it's just, uh, you need to write uh, you know, hundreds lines of code. It's just, uh, yeah. So I think this is the main uh, 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 benefit of the generative uh, AI uh, uh, the API library, and uh, yeah. So it it can solve the uh, users uh, pinpoint uh, one of the pinpoint, yeah. So, yeah, if uh, you can try uh, try it out, it's uh, uh, on this runtime uh, dash GNI from GitHub. We have a lot of example. The, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. So um, now I want to go to the startups uh, that we have on the panel. So Matt and Thomas, you know, there's a lot of frameworks out there right now. I know Llama.cpp is um, popular for local, VLLM is popular for data center, uh, and there's other alternatives as well. Like as a startup uh, with limited resources, how are you thinking about whether you want to support Onyx Runtime Gen AI uh, or go with one of the alternatives or support a collection of them? Um, I'm really curious to get your thoughts. Uh, since you do have to make these choices uh, for your businesses. Uh, so Matt, could you go first and then we'll go to Thomas. Sure, yeah. Sure. Um, I think a very big component okay. for us is as a consumer application, we should be able to run a wide variety of models. So Llama CDP is in a lot of ways at the kind of forefront of models are sort of immediately available in this GGUF format often tools that are very easy to convert from the standard hugging phase or Python uh, PyTorch format to GGUF and run it in Llama CBP. Um, 
I think, I think the experience so far with so far Onyx Gen AI is, is a little bit, it's behind a few more barriers to actually run a, a, a model in Onyx Gen AI where you have to uh, have that converted to a less populated ecosystem, which I'm sure will become more populated. Um, and there are also the, there are the different ways where the model itself has been optimized for a hardware that you might be targeting. Um, so I think it takes still a couple more points of knowledge and sort of iteration points to be able to integrate Onyx Gen AI and Gen AI goes to the MSCPP from my experience so far. Um, so I think that would be sort of the LR Studio take of, of what we experience, um, if that answers the question. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what are your thoughts, Thomas? Yeah. Um, so for Positron, you know, we're developing, you know, custom accelerator architecture happened. The hardware itself is uh, on an FPGA, but um, uh, we opted from the beginning to directly import the um, model weights that uh, have been generated with uh, the Hugging Face Transformers library and kind of directly build a mapper from uh, model weights and using the the config.json as a guide to how that actually gets mapped on onto the hardware. Um, and so, uh, you know, we opted to, you know, pretty narrowly focus on just uh, supporting like Hugging Face Transformers rather than something more broad and like being able to take in a, just an Onyx graph. Um, but for the the specific focus of, of generative AI and how uh, uh, fast we see that moving, that made sense to us being a small startup that could only, you know, focus on doing one thing uh, really well. Um, the the nice thing about how the the rest of the software ecosystems there, if if you assume that you you build the component that can take your the model weights and you know the basic execution flow and uh, be able to get tokens in and out of that from that hardware, is that um, then interfacing with the software that takes care of the inference engine elements that um, uh, uh, were mentioned earlier. Um, you know, handling all the batching, tensor parallelism, all of those elements, um, uh, KV cache, caching, et cetera, uh, those could kind of be abstracted away. And so I think an, an interesting thing, like for us, we're focused on, you know, data center inference. So rather than like Llama CPP being very well optimized for a single user, um, uh, you know, throughput, um, you know, we care a lot about being able to serve a lot of concurrent users and requests. Um, and so like VLM is you know, been really focused on that. I think an interesting thing is that they've, you know, be it, you know, Lama CPP or or um, uh, VLM focusing on like the particular application uh, use case and kind of all of the things separate from the model is that there does look like a pretty good pathway to be able to to take the actual, um, uh, you know, binary that the, the model is distributed in and be able to uh, hook that in to uh, these larger pro uh, projects. So I, I do think it's interesting, can, um, you know, Onyx, uh, especially for a wider set of, of model families and such, can, can Onyx really be that uh, uh, core set that can um, outplace just like the dot safe tensors or uh, uh, that, I mean, uh, what was mentioned earlier by, by Matt uh, going to, to GGUF, um, uh, you know, you can either do that uh, translation to the formats that currently exist, or hopefully just have one thing to uh, encompass um, all models. Yeah, that's kind of mirrored my experience as well. So like I've personally done some application development with a bunch of different LLM frameworks this year, you know, just trying to bring up like different application scenarios and different uh, hardware backends. And so I definitely noticed like there's extra steps for Onyx Gen AI, you know, you have to get the Onyx uh, file from somewhere. You you need to learn the like generator and the params uh, structures and call those like thirty or so lines of code. Um, and it's a it's a little bit different from just going ahead and using like a, a hugging face library or VLLM or something like that. That's a little bit more uh, turnkey. Um, so yeah, uh, Yufang or Rama, do you guys consider those like features or bugs and are there plans to streamline and just make it easier for like these kind of startups to adopt? Uh, yeah, so I think it's just mainly uh, you're talking about uh, two questions. The first question is some uh, model, uh, the model sourcing. Right? So how do you get the model? Um, so it's just uh, uh, like Lama, uh, the GGOF, uh, Lama CPP, they also build up the 
community and uh, people, once they train a model or get a new model, you can quickly get the GGUF uh, model format. I think this is one thing that uh, the whole Onyx community need to uh, think about this or how we can improve our Onyx format and also the tool chain to get the model quickly. So one thing we uh, for uh, for the Onyx Runtime Gen AI we do is, is we created a a, a, a tool chain. Uh, it is a model builder, and maybe it is uh, you, you are not aware of that. It is uh, we need more pr uh, promotion on that. Maybe it is uh, uh, so the model builder uh, is is you can take the hugging face model or the GGUF model. The model builder can uh, convert that model to to. Uh, 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 convert the hugging face model GGF to the optimized Onyx model directly. Mm -hmm. So I think this is can uh, uh, solve kind of can solve the uh, model sourcing uh, problem partly. And um, yeah, but uh, uh, this is uh, uh, a tool chain. But for some user, many of the user, they even don't want to run this tool. They just want to see. I want to run a some fast three model. Uh, where can I get it? They just go to the uh, hugging face, and they can download the GGOF model uh, directly, like for the even the functional version. I think this is the one thing that uh, we we already have the model, uh, the Onyx Zoo model Zoo mm -hmm. for a long time. But if you go to the if we go to the uh, Onyx model Zoo, and uh, uh, yeah, we don't even have one popular uh, generative uh, AI model there. So I think this is one uh, one thing that the whole Onyx. Uh, our community need to uh, work on, and uh, we need to maybe set up the um, uh, uh, the 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 pipeline, the 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 red Onyx format, and the the tool chain to quickly create and uh, publish the Onyx model and allow user to get the model quickly. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the thing. And the the second thing for you is is for the if you're talking about. Uh, uh, user also need to write a twenty to thirty uh, lines to to use the uh, GNI. But if you look, if you use Lambda CPP, uh, you need to write more code. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah. But if you uh, you talk about uh, if you use the uh, transformer opt, opt, uh, optimum, it may uh, uh, use less uh, uh, less code. But uh, if you need to configure different. Uh, uh, Sampling parameter. Actually, you you need more code. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I I, I think I, I can uh, think how we see your offline and, uh, to learn more about how we can optimize our API uh, further and make it is more uh, uh, user friendly and easy to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be happy to talk more about that. And I know we've done. You know. Krishna and I have worked on Onyx models use, so I think we hear the call to action there as well. Uh, that's definitely an important one. Um, yeah, one thing is, is uh, internally we are now also have a project that we we are building a pipeline that can uh, uh, convert the uh, PyTorch model to Onyx model and then benchmark it and uh, uh, and then publish it to, uh, uh, now we are considered uh, consider to publish it to the Azure uh, AI uh, uh, repo. And uh, yeah, in this way, the user can download the model uh, by themselves. But I think it is, uh, we need, uh, uh, we, we cannot do it by ourselves. We need the community uh, uh, to, to, to do that in order to compete. Uh, or we on the CPP or the GGUF data format. Okay, well said. Uh, Rama, did you want to add anything? Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with what you two said. I mean, about the model availability. Well, so, uh, the GGUF uh, the models, the main advantage is availability, right? And making sure we have this available is important. Um, I'm slightly different topic with regards to some of the other points that came up that you can also mention. From an Onyx standard perspective, maybe there are a few things we can explore. One is uh, Onyx is a functional representation, hence it doesn't have a notion of state. Uh, so state labels get mapped to uh, uh, both model inputs and model outputs. But it will be relatively straightforward to extend the proto to add some information to say 
this input and output represent a state variable mm. in case that enables say backends to optimize uh, the implementation. So in a sense, you can capture state variable information within the model representation. That's an extension you could do. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense too. All right, cool. Uh, let's now go to the uh, kind of major hardware vendors here. So I'm curious to hear from each of you where you're at with adopting uh, Onyx for Gen AI purposes. Um, you know, have and are you using like regular Onyx, Optimum, uh, ORT Gen AI, um, or are you just kind of uh, investigating right now? Uh, so can we start with uh, Max and then we'll go around? Yeah. Um... We are investigating all the sites, basically. Mm -hmm. We are looking at GGML and at Onyx. Um, the big benefit that we have in Onyx and that I think we share with AMD and Intel, the investment in DirectML. Uh, DirectML is a platform that we all build on, that we all have a heavy investment on the driver side in. Mm -hmm. And it delivers, if everything one runs well, um, for example, Llama 7B will definitely run best on DirectML currently. Mm -hmm. And I'm a dev tech. I'm very performance focused. So I usually go to the most performed backend and I have to find a way to enable that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, for me, it's for me, it's not about those 20 lines of code. For me, it's more like the same story that we just heard about the annoyance that I have to get that Onyx model sometimes, um, the 20 lines of code could as well be 50 because the coding is kind of done quickly. But the mm -hmm. process to get that Onyx, that's most of the time the more annoying part. And then what hurts me the most with Onyx currently is that it's no longer universal. Whenever I go to Onyx Runtime Gen AI, I lose that big benefit that Onyx always had for me. Mm -hmm. that I can actually change the backend in an instance. I change the string of Onyx Runtime uh, to the backend string, and I can immediately use a different backend. That's no longer possible with all the custom operators currently in there. Right. And that goes along with what Kevin said before, that we need a way to, as a hardware vendor, leverage that. Mm -hmm. And I think there are some ways that we should explore. Yeah, I think... You bring up a very good point, and I think a lot of my thoughts are very aligned to that as well. So Intel has a vested interest to have something like an Onyx, like an open ecosystem, because we have a lot of hardware. We have a lot of backend that goes out to the customers, and our customers also want the choice. Uh, so, that, so I think it's a vested interest for Intel to be have this community developing um, more more faster, I would say. And the reason I say that is I think Onyx runtime is very important component of overall Onyx ecosystem. Onyx as a functional representative of the graph and runtime as an execution provider, right? So I think a lot of what we do in Onyx runtime needs to be upstream to Onyx very fast and they need to be in lockstep. Uh, I think what you brought, like the custom operators, right? It's something that we do in Onyx runtime comes up as a custom operator in Onyx, and now a hardware cannot support that, right? So I think that needs to be a first-class citizen. Whatever happens in Onyx runtime needs to be up front Onyx as a first-class citizen. Uh, and when we talk about specifically Gen AI, the attention is a very critical component, right? The optimization that goes into that attention, uh, flash attention, page attention, a lot of those are critical components. So we need to find a way to upstream those optimizations. I think that's why a lot of these Lama.cpp implementers are flourishing, right? Because they are able to do that and support through backends. So I think having get that going in lockstep will be very important so that the custom operators can phase away and then those become first-class citizens and it opens up door for every hardware to be able to support those operators. Actually, um, that's exactly what I also feel. I don't think that we, I, th I believe in, we could find a way of working around upstreaming those custom operators in an instance, because it can't, I, I kind of do get why Onyx is holding back on 
making those operators standard because we don't want to clutter the Onyx spec, right? We want to kind of keep it neat and as clean as possible uh, because otherwise it gets a hell to implement a backend, right? If you have to commit to all the customer operators, if you want to be a backend, that kind of destroys the um, notion of why Onyx is so great because it is able to be represented in a more or less limited set of operators that are really important and that enable a model to run kind of efficiently. If you want to go the extra mile and, ex and implement all the operators like the custom ones, then yeah, sure, go ahead and you will get the best performance possible, which is what I meant with DirectML achieves exactly that. I feel like it would be a great idea to keep it optional whenever loading an Onyx format. Why don't we have, we have those uh, Onyx functions currently, those local functions. Why don't we keep a state in there? Does the backend want the Onyx function as a node or does it want the subgraph that it has been beforehand? Does it want that very granular operation basis? Because I know that OpenBino definitely does some pattern matching as well. And if you haven't implemented it as of right now as a custom operator in Onyx Runtime, then you can definitely do something with the subgraph of that or local function. And Kevin from TensorT can definitely do something with that subgraph of the local function as well. Um, so we do have pattern matching ourselves, but we can't, we can't run those files that DirectML can run anymore. All right. Do you guys want to respond to that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. It is, uh, yeah, so for this uh, customer op, it is uh, one of the pinpoints for different backend to support them. And I think the function is a good point. I think for the Onyx now, it is quite hard to add a standard op. I think we need to change that. <laughs> it's a, like it is a can we just, can, one one thought is is can we uh even even for the function right so we cannot use the local function we need to make the function also uh send out a standard function or the uh the uh, or not uh not all back back uh, backend can uh, can support this function because they, they even don't know this local function right so this function also need to be a uh, uh, public uh or standard function just like the uh, if you know that we have a, a dynamic quantized linear, that is, is a, a public function. So I'm just thinking one thought is, is can we create a like function set, a function group like for GNI, right? So or for the uh, attention uh, for the transformer model, we create a, 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 a we just create the 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 a group of uh, function public function and uh, uh, can move quickly for this uh, on the just for this GNI uh, model and then make it uh, public or standard and then in this way different backend can uh, can support them uh, well but in the future if the GNI of a certain uh, uh, architecture they are out of date so we just uh, we just uh, deprecate this GNI uh, uh, group of function. Uh, that's it. This is uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, uh, one thought is just we need to move quickly to make uh, this uh, op standard. Yeah, just a really quick thing. I think you know some of the elements that Onyx should be able to actually represent and would be of huge value to um, over what is currently possible with things like GGUF or just your standard safe tensors format, et cetera, is really being able to encode um, uh, multiple different, like uh, not just the quantized weights, but maybe a variety of quantized uh, weight formats, which depending on the specific model, there's different trade-offs even at the individual operation or layer level of um, how quantization induced error um, happens and if that information can be passed to the the back end um, you could you know, opt to do things at different precision levels based on where you actually need that precision um, and none of that is really being contemplated in in other formats um, and onyx kind of 
already wants to encode as much information that can actually be used by by backends. Um, and then secondly, and sort of related to the the last um, uh, presentation before this panel, um, you know, being able to encode more information about tensor parallelism and pipeline parallelism, other things uh, uh, for that's extremely useful for running models at scale, which I think, you know, the past year, year and a half of uh, generative AI taking over so much of the industry, um, like we haven't, there was never this level of demand requirement for massive uh, models at scale um, until, you know, transformer models. So I think Onyx really has an opportunity to uh, be able to convey as much information about, you know, data dependencies and how to actually break up um, a particular model into pieces that enable uh, uh, greater processing scale. Dash, right. I would like to also add a few points uh, to the team's discussion. I think excellent points. One which I really agree is the model is not worked. Uh, AWQ and GPTQ have been around for quite a, quite a bit of time now to export any LLM or in an X format is, is still a, a challenge. And, you know, it's not as friendly I mean, in just the model, as I think Max pointed out, it's really difficult to, to get that. That's one challenge. The the other one, as which um, Yufang pointed out, I think it's a great suggestion. Um, working on NPU, the biggest challenge is uh, all the nodes are, you know, are, are more friendly to CPU uh, languages today. And usually in the use of custom accelerators, they would really fold a bunch of operators into a single function. So being able to have an export option of a compressed node or a node that really defines an entire function of a particular operator, like a GQ or an MHA, versus um, breaking down the node into a subclub, having an option to enable that would, would I think, would greatly benefit on adopting Linux in Gen AI much more ubiquitously. Um, I think those are the really two key points based on my experience so far. So far. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely hearing, you know, a common theme of bringing some of the benefits from these more LLM specific frameworks towards <laughs> Onyx, like, yeah, as Reggie was saying, being able to identify big subgraphs for fusion, easy access to the models. Um, and then I think that allows us to also get the benefit from direct ML more and more so, uh, where yeah, I think a lot of us here see DirectML as this kind of superpower, especially as the, the AI PCs are coming about. Um, Rajiv, did you want to share anything more broadly about kind of the journey you're on with um, Onyx at the moment? Yes, yes, sure, sure, sure. sure, sure. So, uh, on specifically on the LLMs engine, yeah, uh, there are two. There are two levels of the problems today that the, you know, the community has to solve. The first is just the model execution, which is a single element graph. And then the upcoming algorithm optimizations, which is something like speculative decoding, where multiple onyx subgraphs or models have to be orchestrated. So the ongoing experience is with uh, you know, orchestrating or scheduling is such type of decoding is is now requiring the users to go across different software stacks. So let's say we optimize um, execution on a C++ engine, but uh, use speculative decoding on a Python engine. Uh, today, the developers have to rewrite all that on a C++ runtime that is conducive to one next runtime, and then orchestrate everything together in a next runtime context. Um, there, I think there is a there's still a room, uh, an opportunity for Onyx Runtime Gen AI infrastructure to provide Gen AI specific solutions. Uh, that's that's one aspect of uh, experience. The second one is uh, some of the fundamental operators like GQ and or, or even like Artemis norms. If there's an option to be able to Provide guidance to analyze to rewrite them that's much more friendlier to um, custom accelerator architectures. 
And that's specifically for the Gen AI stack, so that users have more uh, uh, more tools from the Onyx runtime without writing a lot of graph rewrites by themselves, which is actually a bit of work across the community if you think about it. So these are some of my experiences. Too. Okay, uh, thank you, Rajiv. Um, if uh, if anybody on the panel uh, uh, wanted to reply to anything, now's a good time. And then I think we can turn it over to the audience for any audience questions to our to our amazing panel here. A lot of experts uh, all in one place. It's just, it's just a thought in my mind when I was going to one of the presentation of the Digest AI. Um, I think that was a very good tool. And I was wondering if somebody could take that tool, run it on Hugging Face or some other popular repository where scan through what are the popular models there are, what are the popular ops that are coming in, and try to upstream those ops onto Onyx as soon as we can before the Llama CPP, or at least the community can start getting benefit from them instead of relying on custom ops or other functions, whatever that way. So, I think the challenge is how do we figure out whether some operations needs to be standard or not, right? That's the challenge. And that's always going to be a challenge, right? Because new models will come in, the new ops will come in, that's always going to be a challenge. Having a tool like that to be able to scan through and figure out what needs to be added to the standard set of ops, that might help get those ops faster and enable the, the uh, ecosystem adoption faster. Yeah, so if if, uh, if we look at the GGOF model, actually, it is uh, quite a uh, high key. It, is, uh, it doesn't even have a graph. Right? So the graph is built based on the uh, model uh, architecture or model data type. So like uh, it is, has a fast three model. It's just uh, oh, this architecture is fast three. And then it's just the weight and also other metadata. So I think uh, Onyx can learn something from this. It is uh, like, uh, oh, if there's a popular model, right? So if we we can we can standard uh, standard some operator like uh, attention and thing like that, and also we can create the model specific operator, uh, the popular operator, right? So if people want to support that, support this model, on this model, you can you can you can uh, um, implement this uh, uh, operator like we can create like uh, uh, GNI first three the X, X operator, right? So this operator, maybe it's, uh, if it can be generalized, we can we can just create it under the GNI uh, scope. If it is cannot, it's specific for certain model, you just uh, name it as uh, like phi X, yeah, X operator. And yeah, with this, we can move faster. And uh, uh, right, so like for, for the GGOF, the, if there's a new architecture, they just create a new model uh, architecture like uh, 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 4 and then it is uh, they they uh, they just need to implement uh, uh, change the code in the Lambda CPP and uh, yeah. But uh, for Onyx, I think maybe we can uh, we can think more. It's uh, like we don't need to make the operator constant or forever. It's just we create if the, if we just want to support some popular model. And we can we can do some also, uh, uh, slide, slightly uh, loose uh, 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 requirement for this operator. It is specific for certain model, and everyone can add this. If if the community agree on this operator, we just merge it and make this a, a standard. Or is this just a, some uh, random? Oh, So uh, one important aspect uh, is around portability, where we always, you know, you download an Onyx file, you have one file that's portable across, you know, systems, backends, and all of that. But now if you look at the drops that we see for, you know, Phi 3 or all of those models, we see a lot of files. Like we see some JSON files, we see it's like a folder now, and it's not a file. Does this warrant an extension or a refresh to the overall spec? Uh, is that something that we should consider? Yeah, 
would say kind of just building off the, the last comment of um, how other formats are, are very different from, from Onyx and the approach of uh, like, uh, let's just say Llama has become like a pretty uh, universal built on arch architecture. And like the, the first uh, uh, set of models from Mistral, um, you know, basically just directly built on top of Llama, et cetera. So, um, you know, in, in that case, having Llama.cpp just support the Llama architecture as it originally did, uh, being able to take different fine tunings or different forks of the base Llama architecture and being able to immediately have that support by just bringing in different weights file actually is a lot easier uh, to work with as the, the user of that program than it is working with, with Onyx. Um, and kind of like, uh, I, I think the, the belief of the community, and I, I believe this, you know, prior to, to getting into to Transformers, that um, having that single uh, file that, that contains all the graph, all of the information that you would need to be able to just execute that model is really attractive as, as a, a concept. Um, but in terms of actually getting people to use and, and be able to build upon um, uh, other things in open source, I think it actually is, is a constraint and, and limits um, that free sort of development um, and, and things being built off of, uh, uh, you know, smaller bases. Um, so I, I think there's pros and cons there. I would say is up to the Onyx community overall if they want to go in that direction. I think, you know, having that config, that JSON that, you know, lists the, you know, number of heads, the, you know, embedding size kind of gives you, like, I, I can look at that config.json and have a mental picture of, okay, how does that network actually get get built um, is very interesting because, you know, I could open up Neuron and, and import an Onyx file and look at that, that uh, graph, but mentally I can get a lot of that same picture by looking at like 10 lines of text um, in, in a config.json. So I, I would say I've grown to actually prefer that as a very quick way to analyze, okay, what's different between Llama 2 going to Llama 3 or difference between Llama 3 and Mixed Roller Gemma um, versus the process that I did do two, three years ago of opening up things in, in Onyx and, uh, and, and kind of having to uh, open up the, the whole can of worms. You like having a digest. <laughs> yeah. That, but that kind of goes in the philosophical question. Are we at the end with Transformers? Because if that's the case, yeah, then those li they, yeah. those few lines are plenty. You, you can represent current language models with that. But what about changing arch architectures again? Then out of the sudden, those files will be kind of use useless, I would say. Yeah. Um, and that's the beauty of Onyx and has always been the beauty in the past. We, It has been around for quite a few waves of AI, I'll call it. Um, and it was able to represent those. And it's currently, although we have troubles with LLMs, we are still able to represent it. And with custom ops, we even make it readable. Let it be custom ops or let it be local functions. I'm in the fan base for local functions. Um, but if you look at, a, at an Onyx file, which is solely local functions, and you look at the names, you can still get that exact picture that you have in mind. Um, but yeah, I, I do see the beauty of Onyx that it, it does capture the craft, the weights, and everything that you need. What it doesn't do the internal state. And uh, I'm not sure who proposed it earlier, but that internal state that we could capture inside the Onyx, I do like that idea a lot, that we could capture that a KV cache is not an input, nor an output, but it's rather a state. That's, <laughs> that's a beautiful idea, in my opinion. A lot of people today showed a bunch of different frameworks, uh, Onyx scripts, some uh, array library. Um, and it seems like the ecosystem is getting a little bit fragmented. Uh, a lot of people have optimizations uh, in different frameworks. So we saw 
There's the Onyx Optimizer repository. Onyx Runtime has some level of optimization. There's three different platforms for quantizing. Uh, so do you guys see a way of condensing uh, all these repositories that people are building? Or is this just naturally how uh, ecosystems develop? Um, yeah. Yeah, who wants to take it? So my opinion on that is it's the prototyping phase. That's my take, but you just want to, to reach for the mic, so I'm happy to give it to you. <laughs> uh, I guess it's a little bit of both. I think in a sense, uh, yes, uh, consolidating some of that would be helpful, but at the same time, I think uh, what we saw presented today is in fact one of the strengths of Onyx that it is a community Given effort, and there are a number of tools being built, which uh, I think is a characteristic of an ecosystem, right? That uh, I, I saw several things that I've never used before, but I find it found find them useful as a Onyx user, and I'm sure as the community builds more and more tooling, that actually helps strengthen the ecosystem. I think. Uh, uh, but but some amount of duplication and is going to happen, I guess. I guess maybe a bit of a question, um, sort of based on your your previous uh, response. What does does Onyx want to have that prototyping? Does it want to think of the Onyx format as being um, a, a thing that can universally represent neural networks? If I'm kind of coming from the side of really caring about transformers. Um, there's, like I kind of said, a, a more streamlined way of just supporting that. But can Onyx be the place that different neural network architectures, be it you know, the many variety that are currently exist, anything developed in the future, can all be commonly represented. And then uh, you can then export to these more sp uh, specific formats that may have... Uh, you know, a, a more streamlined approach to be able to then run inference or or do other piece, uh, you know, specialized uh, tasks. So my belief is that that's what Onyx is good at, what it has a proven track record in of being able to um, yeah, represent all the different networks. And it's, in my opinion, it's partly prototyping because we are kind of at a breaking point with Dynamo export as well. Like we are change, changing a major source where we bring the Onyx files from. Um, they look pretty different. And I think new inputs can require new tools, which also supports your point of maybe for LLMs, it's a good idea to have a quick config. So yes, is it, I think the variety is, the variety is really embracing what Onyx is able to do. And I don't think we're going to keep all the tools around and maybe it's going to boil down a little again, but in general, yeah. It's like that. But I guess to the question of, uh, I forget the exact title of this panel, but is the idea then from like the best way for the Onyx community to support and, and enable a generative AI LLMs? Is it maybe not thinking of Onyx as being the format that you directly want to run, but have it be the best thing to be able to do that development and then be able to export it in a way that is then um, much more specialized and, and for a particular, almost thinking rather than uh, Onyx having backend for a particular piece of hardware, but thinking of the LLM or Llama.cpp Think of that as an abstract machine model, almost. Not entirely sure if I completely got what you what you mean by that. Um, to some degree, I think yes, Onyx should be that abstract view, and this is exactly why I do not support making anything that comes up an Onyx operator instantly, which I kind of understand why we do not have an MHA operator yet. So 
all the operators that were listed today, basically. Um, I do get it, and I think it it might make sense to make them kind of optional operators, what you Feng described, with local functions that can kind of be switched towards being that single operator or not. Um, but I still do think the execution platform behind it will still be able to read the Onyx, but it has to no longer be as static as it currently is. It has to be able to combine nodes and dynamically compile nodes together. And currently, if you look at Onyx runtime, most of that is static, which is why we introduce all those custom ops, because we need those static ops. Um, but if you look at the hardware vendors, everyone does a craft compiler. Um, Intel has OpenVINO, we have TensorT, and uh, yeah, that everyone wants a full craft representation. There's also a bit in the direction of Microsoft for DirectML. The reason why we have those custom operators piped through to DirectML is because we can't we can't do what we want to do for, for an MHA, for example, through DirectML if we don't get that custom op given because we don't have a, as a hardware vendor, we, we don't have a view on the full craft, so we can't do our magic, I'll say. Yeah, I think you, you bring up a graph compiler and I, I didn't initially wanted to go there, but I think, um, it's, it's it's probably up to Onyx and Onyx ecosystem to figure out what's a roadmap and vision of Onyx, right? How Onyx and Onyx runtime wants to evolve over time. And the reason I bring this up is four years ago, I was at a startup called Seema.ai. Um, and we were building, like everybody else, a brand new accelerator. And we wanted to figure out how do we build front end of our compiler. So, and... The startup, you had to build everything, right? From front end of a compiler all the way down to the assembly, right? We were building a brand new accelerator. We were, I was defining my own assembly. So, and we didn't want to take on the project of building everything from the top to bottom. At the time, PyTorch runtime was not there. It was very early stages of PyTorch runtime. Uh, on Onyx runtime was also, I think, was probably not, not out there. But I think what stuck to us was TVM at the time. TVM had the compiler built in, it had the graph compiler. So what it enabled us to kind of bypass all those stages, right? It takes, it reads Onyx, Onyx was there. It read Onyx graph, it read PyTorch graph, it read TensorFlow graph, it had the gra graph compiler in build. It could compile down to an IR and it can do IR level optimization on top and then give you an optimized IR, right? And then what we did, we took those optimized IR and then we converted that IR to our assembly, right? So now that's, so when you mentioned graph compiler, that's, that's what I say, it's, it's up to Onyx, it, whether do, does Onyx wants to take up the onus of building the graph compiler, right? And that's probably for Onyx as an ecosystem to figure out whether that's the open project that Onyx wants to build and go that route or not. So at that time, had the graph compiler existed, we would have probably went on and ended up the Onyx as part of the Simarote. But now they are shipping the product with TVM. Yeah, I think for the uh, compiler, it's, maybe it's just helpful for, for the general model, but for the uh, transformer-based model, the architecture or the operator is quite simple, right? It doesn't have attention. Uh, layer norm, uh, gel, or other activation, and also memo, right? So it's just quite, sim uh, quite simple. And uh, and for the compiler, how do you handle the attention, right? So can the compiler recognize this uh, complex attention subgraph properly? <laughs> Not, right? It's quite uh, hard to do to do that. And uh, for example, for the for the NV uh, for the NVIDIA GPU or uh, uh, even AMD GPU, so the the flash attention right, it can run the attention uh, efficiently. Right? So you you first need to recognize this subgraph as uh, attention, but uh, I don't know if 
if if the compiler can recognize this. But for the yeah, totally agree for the general model, like for the uh the CNA model and also other model, the compiler definitely is uh, this is a good way to go. For GNA model, I I'm not sure about that. I think we're uh, we're getting close to happy hour here. Um, something to look forward to. Uh, are there any kind of final audience questions before we let the panel go? Just have a question um, around the suggestion of having this fast moving kind of optional operator set for generative AI purposes. Um, Sometimes we know that kind of standardization and fast iteration just don't always go hand in hand. So I guess my question is, how do we improve the process or what are the things that can be done to uh, make the idea of having this kind of fast revolving um, set of generative operators a reality? Yeah, I think that 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 is just a good question. And uh, if if the community agree that we can uh, have this uh, uh, loose uh, loose restrict uh, operator, I think once some once for example, we have a new operator, a new model come out, and someone can contribute to Onyx quickly. And I think everyone will follow that. And they will say this is a merge. Just like uh, think about the GGUF, right? So there's a, if there's a new model, they can just add a new architecture and then implement that code. This is similar to, to Onyx. If there's a new model, some way, uh, maybe we can have a community uh, or, the, or a panel or work group for this GNI model. And there's a new model come out and we quickly design a, uh, or add the operator for this specific uh, the popular model, and and then uh, uh, the community has the has the guideline for for this new model, or has the operator they should implement it for this operator. Thanks. Yeah, I like that idea. Okay, um, I think we we've kept these guys on here uh, long enough, probably. Uh, hopefully, everybody's sticking around for the happy hour. Uh, so if anybody has any more questions, you can track them down. But uh, please give a round of applause. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, thank you to the panel. Uh, it was a great day of uh, events, talks, and community updates. And the panel was really informative. Uh, I'm hoping to you know get things summarized and convert into actionable steps for Onyx. But, um, yeah, it's been a long day. Uh, thank you. Thanks for joining us.